And you are listening to 94.1 KPFA in Berkeley, 89.3 KPFB in Berkeley, 88.1 KFCF in Fresno, and online at kpfa.org. The time is 2.30. Up next, Pushing Limits. This is Eddie Ituarte along with Josh Elwood on uh, Pushing Limits Disability Radio I'm here on KPFA in Berkeley, California. Hey, Josh. Hi. Good afternoon, Eddie. And uh, who is that that um, began this show? It was Monk. It was the Lonious Monk, yeah, going back to 1957. And then um, uh, it was recorded at Carnegie Hall, 57. And John Coltrane then was the, we heard of uh, his solo uh, and that was a big part in music history. Yeah, and big part of it. Yeah, so Thelonious Monk, um, what we're going to do today is we're going to sample some people, uh, not really play big pieces of music as we often hear in jazz, but because we want to throw in uh, some a number of different people and let them uh, let, talk just a little bit about them and sample their music so we're not playing uh, long pieces. So that, that is part of a longer piece, uh, but the other ones will probably be shorter. And so um, the intent today is to talk about important Jazz musicians and also vocalists um, who had disabilities. That's right. Okay, and Monk. Um, um, and by the way, we're pre- we're not presenting this program because we want to show these artists as great inspirational figures or super crips or anything, but like that. We w- want to remind folks that these are original musicians who contributed to the great field of modern vocal and improvisational music, making it richer, more diverse, and adding to the enrichment of those who love this music. 
Now, Thelonious Monk did have a bipolar disorder. Uh, according to a number of people, including Robin Kelly, who a few years ago uh, wrote a very well-researched paper about the pianist. And I, I just want to write, uh, quote a little bit about what Rob, uh, Robin Kelly uh, said in an interview with Psychology Today, the magazine. Kelly uh, said, I came down on the side that the disorder or bipolar disorder did not enhance or enrich his work, or give him unique vision that he would not have had otherwise. I think he still would have been monk, and in fact, uh, might have been more prolific in terms of his compositions if he had not had the bipolar disorder. Even his antics, which have often been used to define him, I believe were crafted or on or were spontaneous manifestations of his wit, not out, or not outcomes of disease. And, and surely a monk had to be one of the most wittiest and one of the most, at the same time, one of the cerebral and swinging in his own way musician, Thelonious Monk. I, he's still one of my idols. Anyway, um, um, uh, also, uh, Robin uh, Kelly uh, said that I do not think the kind of meds he received uh, made uh, mattered more. Uh, but there was something called Therese, 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 which made his finger stiff, and was it was often a struggle for him. When he finally received lithium treatments, evidence suggests that it deadened his creative drive and may have contributed his decision to stop playing, although it successfully stabilized him. So here's certainly one instance where um, his disability impacted maybe too, much, too negatively on his music. Now, um, let's move on to another uh, pianist, and that's Bud Powell. And Bud Powell was sort of a protege of Monk. They, uh, I think Monk was around seven years older than Powell. Powell was a pianist, uh, who, and, and both of them lived in New York City around the same time. They were friends. They hung around together some, played together, um, and has been said they harassed, were harassed together by the New York City cops. Both are African American. Both are, were African Americans. Um, Powell, Bud Powell was first hospitalized in 1945 after an incident involved the alleged police brutality. He had recurrent mental issues and was subjected to electroconvulsive therapy in 1951 and 52. Uh, let me just want to quote from another writer about these musicians. According to Brian Priestley, writing in jazz, The Essential Companion, Powell was more or less impaired during the last decade of his life and only imperfectly reflected his earlier work, that is, his music. But Priestley writes this. There is often a subsidiary intensity caused by the diminished means of expression, which results in an even clearer distillation of his melodic gift. So what I take that to read is that uh, uh, Powell in the last decade or so of his playing um, was not as fancy and did not play as many notes, uh, but was um, clearer in his musical expression uh, 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 and, and the last part of uh, uh, his uh, playing. Um, okay, we're going to, enough talk. Now we're going to listen to one of Powell's compositions, uh, a very evocative for me thing called Parisian Thoroughfare, and it was recorded in Paris and released in uh, 1964, uh, probably recorded before 64. This has Powell on piano, uh, Gilbert Rovere on bass, and Carl Fields on drums.
Bud Powell doing Parisian Thoroughfare. Yeah, that was very pretty. Mm-hmm. Yeah, his compositions were um, a little, uh, maybe on the quirky side, but had some funny names and stuff. Uh, um, quite a musician. And who, I, I, I think he died too early. There could have been more years for people like him and, and, and Monk, especially mm-hmm. Powell. Yeah. Susanna. Right. Susanna Mc- McCorkle from, mm-hmm. from Berkeley. Yes. I've admired her music for a long time. What about her? Singer. Mm-hmm. And a good one, too. And this is just a little taste of... And she she had uh, psychiatric uh, right. disabilities, quite right. serious. Right. Yeah. And uh, I've, in fact, she st- uh, uh, she died from suicide at the age of fifty, I think. Right. And uh, she couldn't deal with all the drugs that that she was taking because of uh, of her disability. Right. And yet, some of the music is cheerful. It's lively. It's fun. Mm-hmm. She was a translator, uh, a writer. Um, Right. And a pretty good, uh, she, she wrote some really nice lyrics. Right. This, this, isn't one, this isn't one of them. This is a George Gershwin's. Yeah, this is George Gershwin. Mm-hmm. Summertime. Summertime. Okay, let's hear it. Very beautiful. Susanna McCorkle mm-hmm. and uh, Dick Serpola on bass. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That was Josh Elwood, and this is Eddie Ituarte here on Pushing Limits today, uh, presenting a sampling of jazz musicians and vocalists. Mm-hmm. 
Um, next, let's go to an older dude, uh, maybe one of the uh, musicians that first uh, uh, that we're hearing today that uh, was playing the longest. That's Chick Webb, drummer. He was born in Baltimore in 1909 and died at 1939, 30 years old. Webb was a band leader and drummer and also a guardian to a very young Ella Fitzgerald, who took over the leadership of the band when he died. Webb had a very serious disability, something called spinal tuberculosis. And this condition uh, sort of gave him a, a what's called a hunchback look. He was described as a tiny man with a big face and stiff shoulders. He was so small that he needed to have a special drum set built to accommodate his small, small frame. However, it did not hinder the power of his drumming or the fun, swinging quality of his big band. And after a major operation at the hospital, uh, he sat up in bed and he said, I'm sorry, I've got to go. With that, he fell back and died at age 30. Ella Fitzgerald sang My Buddy at his funeral. Let's play something that uh, Fitzgerald and Webb wrote together, Josh, something called Who Are You Hunching? <laughs> Hunching, H-U-N-C-H-I-N. And I don't know, I, I just hopefully, hopefully that word hunching is not a variation of one of those seven dirty words that we're, <laughs> we're not supposed to say. So, um, right. so here's the Czech Web Orchestra, big band. Next, uh, Josh. Yeah. N next. Wesley Whitfield. Right. Wesley Whitfield. Beautiful singer, friend, with a, a rather, with a pretty well-known song, Ding Dong, the Witch is Dead. And now her disability is she uses a wheelchair and she, she, she can't walk. Right. Yeah, and that was because of shooting accident. Right. Yeah. Okay. And she's from Napa, Napa, California. Right. 
All right. Ding dong, the witch is dead. Witch, oh witch, the wicked witch. Ding dong, the wicked witch is dead. Wake up your sleepy head. Rub your eyes, get out of bed. Wake up, the wicked witch is dead. She's gone where the goblins go below, below, below your heart. Let's open up and sing and ring the bells. Oh, ding dong, the merry old. Sing it high, sing it low. Let them know. In the lovely land of Oz, in a wicked, a wicked, a wicked a witch there never, never was. She filled the folks in Munchkin Land with terror and with dread. Till one fine day from Kansas way, a cyclone cut a house that brought the wicked, wicked witch her doom. As she was flying on her broom, for the house fell on her head, and the coroner pronounced her dead. Town, the joyous news was spread. Ding dong, the witch is dead. Which old witch, the wicked witch? Ding dong, the wicked witch is dead. Wake up your sleepy head. Rub your eyes, get out of bed. Wake up, the wicked witch is dead. She's gone. Which is dead. Wesley Whitfield. That's right. Okay. And next we're going to do um, Django Reinhardt, born in Belgium. Uh, his fire pretty much messed up to his fingers of his left hand. And he's a guitarist, so he had to change his way of playing. And um, he was, uh, it was, it's an extraordinary story, quite a man. And he shaped jazz guitar. Here's Django Reinhardt doing uh, uh, one of his compositions, which I don't have the name of right now, but uh, let's play it.
All right, uh, Django Reinhardt, and we're we don't have hardly any more time. Barely enough for who? R- Rosie Clooney. Yeah, doing. Uh, I'll be seeing I'll you. I'll be seeing you. And thanks a whole lot to Erica Bridgman. Right. She kept Thank- this thing together. We wouldn't have a show without Erica today. No, no, no doubt about it. Here's Rosemary. <laughs> Summertime's right around the corner, and that means I'll finally have time for books, music, and movies. But I can't really afford to go to the theater or buy new books or CDs. Don't dismay, friend. Dollar Days here at KPFA at our very own parking lot garage sale. We will have books, CDs, and DVDs, most for just one dollar. Not only that, but there will be music and munchies. What better way to spend the afternoon? Live in the parking lot, we're going to have great jazz-ish entertainment by Mutual Aid Duo Project and more surprise guests. Dollar Day at KPFA. Get ready for summertime fun on the corner of Berkeley Way and MLK. Saturday, June 15th from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. 